In this video, we are going to install Stable Diffusion XL's base model and use it within Comfy UI to create absolutely stellar results using Stable Diffusion. If you like videos like this and our tutorials, make sure to like our video, subscribe and hit the bell notification so you don't miss any of our other tutorials. All right, so let's get started in installing Stable Diffusion XL. So Stable Diffusion XL is an incredible model built by the creators of Stable Diffusion. It's one of their base models. And honestly, since I've started using it, I have not used anything from Civit. I used to have to go with Civit to try and get styles that I liked and everything like that. I can do it all from this one model. Now that said on Civit, there are XL models out there that you can use and install, but we're gonna just use the base model directly from Stability and it's gonna be incredible. So if you haven't got Comfy UI already installed, our last tutorial was how to install it, demystifying what you're looking at, making sure you realize that it's not actually that scary. And really Comfy UI is easy to use. It's just as easy to use as something like Automatic 1111, but it's far more efficient, far faster, and does incredible things. So let's go ahead, let's get started. We're here on the Stability website, you can see they have the Excel explanation here. We're going to go in and we're going to install it by going to Hugging Face. All the links, as always, are down below, so you don't have to go looking for them. You don't have to Google them. I got all the links below directly to the download location, so it's very easy to find. And the first thing we're going to download is the XDL Base 1.0. Now, if you're going to use this with Automatic 1111, I recommend you download the SDXL offset LoRa as well. And the reason why is in Automatic 1111, it seems to need it to really get good results. Whereas in Comfy UI, I find it doesn't. So you could download that if you're gonna be using it in Automatic 1111, but we're using Comfy UI. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna download the save tensor. You click this little download button right here and you can see it's 6.94 gigabytes. It's a big file. So maybe click that download and go grab a coffee. And the other one we want is this one here, which is the refiner model, which is another 6.8 gigabytes. So once again, very large. And we want to just make sure that we're getting the SDXL 1.0 save tensor download link is right here. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna to go to my stable diffusion hard drive that I use. And we can see here, I've already downloaded the file. So I have the SDXL base 1.0 and the refiner ready to go. And all we're gonna do is we're gonna take these two files and we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna copy them because they're going to the same place. And we're gonna to go to Comfy UI, Comfy UI, Models, Checkpoints, and we're gonna put both checkpoints in this place. So just like we did with Dream Shaper, it goes in the exact same folder. So very, very simple. Just takes a second because these are big files. <laughs> okay, perfect, there we go. Now we can go back and we can open up Comfy UI. So we're going to run it as NVIDIA. It's going to pop open our screen here. There we go. And now we're back to where we left off. Now I've reset mine so that it's easy to see. It's easy to use. So this is exactly what we had before. Positive and negative prompts. Positive on top, negative on the bottom. And we can go ahead and click here where it says Dream Shaper. And we can click on SD XL Base 1.0 Save Tensor. And that's all we need to really actually start using this. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and we're going to click Q prompt using the same prompt that we had before. And you can see here, it's going to take a moment because it's going to build the model for us. It's going to get everything ready and then it's going to run it. And you can see here, it's come out with something kind of weird. Why did this happen? Because we should not be jettering at 512 by 512. SDXL is not trained on 512 by 512. So what we need to do is come down to lane to image and change it to 1024 by 1024. And this is the smallest size that SDXL has been trained in. So now we have what SDXL is looking for. We can generate again and you can see it's going to take a minute because it's a little bit larger file. In this case, it's going to take me about 10 seconds with my recording app open. And there we go. We have an incredible image. So that's a good start. But what if I told you we could do better? What if we used an SDXL workflow? Now, if we look quickly in 
the nodes that are available, you'll notice that there's things for SDXO. For example, the refiner. Now we're not going to build our own workflow. We're going to use an example workflow that's very easy to load in. And even though it will look incredibly complicated, it's still just as easy to use as what we have here. So what we're going to do is we're going to clear our workflow. So we have a blank slate and we're going to go to this website right here, which has SDXL examples. Now, if you take a look, there's no real workflow to download. Where's the workflow? Well, it's actually in this image, which is really cool. So what we can do is we can take this, click on it and drag it, bring it to comfy UI and just drop it in. Whoa, look at all those boxes. That is a lot of nodes. Remember I said that this thing can get looking pretty, pretty scary, but don't worry. This is just as easy to use as before. Now this is automatically changed because we have the SDXL base already installed and the refiner already installed. It's added those already in our checkpoint loaders. And you'll notice that we have two now instead of one, because we're going to use two K samplers to bring out the best in SDXL. Okay. So we have our text prompts here, positive and negative. We then have a routing system for our prompts here in this little blue box right here. We have our empty lane image, and this is great because we actually get all the sizes that work for SDXL. So we can know what SDXL was trained on. So if we ever want to change it, it's right here. We have our first refiner here. Okay. So we have our base prompt here, our second base prompt here, because it's going to grab from the same prompts because we're using two different samplers, but it's grabbing from the same prompts. And we can look here and we can see that we have a K sampler just like before where we can change our seed. We can randomize it. We can do whatever we want with it. We have our CFG scale just like before. We have our sampler and our scheduler. We have pretty much everything we need right here. And then we have this little box down here with our steps. And what this is doing is that it is telling it when to switch between the regular base model and the refiner. So we don't have to touch anything here, but if you want to add more steps, this is where you could do it. And then we come over and we have our second case sampler, which is for the refiner. You can see that it's actually being labeled. And you can see here that it looks like the first one, except for by default, we leave it as a fixed seed. The reason why is we're taking the seed from the first case sampler and we're using all of our settings for here over here. So we don't want to touch this one. We can leave this refiner the same unless we're changing our sampler name and our scheduler. We leave that one alone. We make all of our changes in the first case sampler, which is for the base. If you have any questions, you can read right here. There's lots of notes. It's really well done. And then we have our VAE decode and our save image. So if we want to run our same prompt again, right? All we have to do is run Q prompt. Now this is really neat. So what's going to happen is it's going to start building the model because we've changed our layout, our workflow, and now it's going to generate our image. And what you're going to see is that it's going to do its first 20 steps out of 25 total steps. And it's going to do those with the original model. So this is the base model being worked on right now. And now it's going to switch to the refiner model for another additional five steps. And that's just going to make our image really pop, gives it lots of detail and make sure it's the highest of quality. Now, if we go over here, look at this image. It's absolutely incredible. It does such a good job. And that's the thing with this model is that it gives you what you are looking for better than pretty much any AI out there that's not using stable diffusion and SDXL. Now we can do similar things to what we have done before where we move our text prompts over because even though this is still becoming a crazy spaghetti mess, it doesn't matter where it is. So if we just want to work over here and so we have our prompts at the top and our image at the bottom, it's right there. And we can still use our batch by going to extra options and creating a batch of images to create and generate. So that is all the same. So now you have SDXL installed. You're using a true SDXL workflow where you're using the refiner and you're using the base model. And it's really that simple to get it installed and get it running. And like I said, it's nothing to be intimidated by because we have things like these incredible workflows. You can also go out on Google, look at other people's workflows and remember, 
the workflow is saved in the image. So you can just copy it over. It's really that simple. I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. I hope I've demystified SDXL for you a little bit and you're able to get it up and running. The next video we're going to do is on prompting. I'm going to show you how to get exactly what you want when you're prompting by adding weights and using different techniques with in prompting to get incredible results. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to like, subscribe, and hit that bell notification so you don't miss our next video. All right, guys, we'll see you later.